the three best and most important way to have an attractive communications or how to use signals to make communication more meaningful verbal and non-verbal signals the relation between non-verbal and verbal systems non-verbal aspects of emotion and communication such as facial expression verbal prosody rhythm pitch timbre gesture and visceral responses are the domain of the right hemisphere and influences spoken language primarily via corpus callosum connections to the left hemisphere said by researcher Gazaga, 1992. Gazaga believes the left brain serves as an interpreter of right brain, nonverbal and emotional functioning. Number 1. Concentrate on your tone of voice when speaking. Number 2. Pay attention to nonverbal signals. Number 3. Be aware that signals can be misread. Concentrate on your tone of voice when speaking. Tone of voice often means much more than what you say. In his book, The Relationship Cure, Dr. Gottmer reveals that when it comes to assessing the meaning of communication in relationships, only 7% of that meaning, comes from the spoken word, while 38% comes, from the tone of voice, and speech patterns, words that may seem neutral, can become incendiary, if spoken with a sarcastic, demeaning, or contemptuous tone of voice, causing the listener, to feel hurt, and disrespected. Your tone of voice can convey a wealth of information ranging from enthusiasm to disinterest to anger. It's what makes you different. Tone of voice can demonstrate your warmth, expertise, sense of humor. It's because your tone of voice encompasses your words. Your tone of voice focuses on how you speak, and the ensuing impression words make on everyone around you. Think of your tone of voice like a personalized vocal fingerprint, that distinguishes, who you are, and can tell others, so much about you. Mouth expressions, and movements, can also be essential, in reading body language. For example, Chewing on the bottom lip may indicate that the individual is experiencing feelings of worry, fear, or insecurity. Researchers from the University of Southern California recorded hundreds of conversations from marriage counseling sessions. The researchers then analyzed the recordings looking at things like pitch, intensity and, even, warbles in the voice, that can indicate moments of, intense emotion. They also looked at the impact of, one partner's tone, of voice had on the other. To compare the data, a separate group of experts, analyzed the behavior, of the couples, taking special note of positive qualities, like, acceptance, or, negative qualities, like, blame. The researchers, then, tracked the couples over a period of five years, to determine if there was any change, in their relationship. Researchers found about talking tone confirmed what many of us may already know intuitively that communication is not just about what you say, but how you say it, and the data showed that studying the couple's voices, 
rather than their behaviors. Better predicted the eventual improvement or deterioration of the relationship. A tone consist umber one pitch high pitched voice can suggest immaturity and defensiveness. A low pitch can make you seem more authoritative and serious. Second, pace. When you slow down, you can help your partner understand what you are saying, and they will be better able to absorb your message. It's a lot harder for a listener to try and understand what you're trying to say and stay engaged if you're speaking at a fast speed and stringing words together. The third is volume. Instead of raising your voice, if you want to emphasize something, try slowing the pace of your words. Hi, fight or more. Fourth is timbre. This is the emotional quality of your talking tone, the attitude you bring to what you say, your partner will use this to build their understanding of what you are saying, practice managing your voice and taking note of how you sound frustrated, rushed, happy, sad. This will help you become more aware of the way your attitude is filtered through the Eiffel Shios of your voice. Pay attention to nonverbal signals. The evolutionary anthropologist, Dierk in 1997, believes that nonverbal signals communicate in a different way than does language. While nonverbal signals enhance and clarify the spoken exchange. They also can operate relatively independent of language and consciousness. Researcher Jacobs in 1994 provides vignettes that illustrate how nonverbal behaviors contain unconscious meanings. Researcher Schwartz in 1992 argues that nonverbal expression plays a pivotal role in how human beings understand one another. Researcher Chido in 1997 considers various forms of somatic symptoms as nonverbal bodily communications having either symbolic meanings or else reflecting the patient's affect state. He argues that some elements of nonverbal somatic responses are the result of alexithymia, a failure to develop out of the sensorimotor stage into the verbal one. Experiments by Egma in 1990 and in 1993 indicate that facial expressions of emotion are linked with specific auto euro system responses for six basic emotions they are anger fear sadness disgust happiness and surprise in the directed task egma instructs subjects how to contract the muscles of their face to create the facial expression of each of the six emotions. When a person, either voluntarily or for unconscious defensive purposes, masks the facial expression of emotion, although they do not show the usual facial display, individual contractions, of facial muscles and automatic hero system changes can still be detected by ECMA in 1993.
Other nonverbal channels, such as voice, can continue to express the facial suppressed emotion. People easily suppress verbal expression, said by Hariga and colleagues in 1996. Facial expression is harder to suppress, and vocal qualities, the hardest to suppress, when signals of emotion are discrepant. People are more likely to rely on facial expression and vocal qualities rather than on what a person says. Be aware that signals can be misread. The great majority of us are easily misled, said by Dr. Paul Egmer, a psychologist at the University of California at San Francisco, whose study on catching lies appeared in the publication of American Psychologist. It's very difficult, and most people just don't know what cues to rely on. Researcher Dr. Robert Gifford reported finding specific nonverbal clues to such traits as aloofness, gregariousness, and submissiveness. His report, which appeared in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, also found that, though there are such reliable clues to character, according to Dr. Gifford, people are being hired for some of the wrong reasons. People read much into nonverbal cues that just isn't there while missing much that is. In a research, Dr. Gifford said, Social skills are far more visible than motivation, but coming across well in your job interview is no guarantee of other traits that might matter in your day-to-day -day job performance. Dr. Patterson said, People think dominant people look you in the eye more. But it's actually the reverse. The more submissive partner has to attend more to the dominant one. Researcher Dr. Egma said, It's no guarantee that a lie is being told. But it signifies a hot moment when something is going on. You should follow up with interrogation.